Hi, my name is Paweł Spechalski and besides the fact that coronavirus is currently raging throughout the world, I have something like a good news. I already mentioned this in one of the posts on the YouTube, um, YouTube community page that um, the Matrix filter, the new improved dynamic notch filters I developed for iNav will be available not only in iNav, but I also adapted it and proposed it to the Emu flight and the Emu flight team agreed to merge it and enable this by default on the upcoming 0.3.0 of the Emu flight. But what exactly is the Matrix filter? and uh, how does it work and how it differs from a normal filter, normal dynamic notches that we have in, for example, on Betaflight and iNav and also inside of the Emu flight since like whoo, almost forever and how does it differ from the RPM filters. It all comes down to the fact that all the dynamic notches are based on something that's called the FFT analysis, fast Fourier transformation analysis. Long story short, when we have a normal gyro trace, it's uh, something called the time domain, when on the x-axis we have the time. However, with the fast Fourier and uh, fast Fourier transformation, we go from the time domain to frequency domain. So, the signal from gyro separately on the x-axis y-axis and z-axis is passed through the FFT and thanks to the FFT the algorithm is able to pick, pick the peak frequencies and usually the peak frequency above a certain minimum frequency is the frequency of the current main noise source that is visible in the gyro trace. Usually that comes from either a motor or a propeller almost the same or for example frame resonance. The most distinguished peak inside of the frequency domain means that there is something noisy on this exact frequency. So this is step one and this is whole, what the whole gyro analyze part of the all main softwares Betaflight, INAF and InFlight is doing. Then comes the slight difference with the standard dynamic notches, standard dynamic gyro filters, if for example a peak frequency of 150 Hz is found on the x-axis, on the x-gyro traces, then the notch, dynamic notch with the center frequency at 150 Hz is placed on the x-axis. And if uh, for example 200 Hz peak is found on the y-axis, the notch filter on the 200 Hz is placed on the y-axis. So we found something here, we apply something here and this is more or less working. However, this approach kind of misses the fact that there can be more than only one peak, the frequency peaks on the gyro traces. Because think about this like that. If one motor is currently producing noise of 200 Hz, because it's rotating, so the noise has 200 Hz, but the different motor is at 150 Hz and it's not the main frequency on the x-axis, but something like a second or the third, but however this for a known no reason is picked up on the z-axis as the primary, then this notch filter would be applied only on the z-axis. The chance that not only the most, the biggest peak on one axis um, is kind of, kind of, kind of above zero, and uh, the chance that we are actually missing other uh, other frequencies is kind of, kind of there, and there is also a chance that the noise frequency, the, no the noise peak at one axis, not the first one, not the most distinguishable one, is visible on any other axis. So what does the matrix filter do? Um, just extends the same idea. If, for example, based on the FFT analysis, we, the algorithm finds that there is a on x-axis a peak frequency of 150 Hz, on z-axis of 200 Hz and on y-axis of let's say 250 Hz, then three notches on every of the gyro 
traces will be applied. One at 150, one at 200, one at 250. This no, not only gives us the possibility to filter out more than just one noise source on each axis, but also if all three frequencies are very close together, because for example we just have a tremendous amount of noise coming from all the motors uh, running in the same moment with the same RPM, then we attenuate the single frequency three times stronger that we would be doing this with uh, only one notch applied somewhere. Simple solution? Simple solution. It's very similar in approach to what the RPM filters does. Because um, it's almost the same, only the source of the information of the, of the main frequency is different in, in, in case of the RPM filter. In the RPM filter we check each of the motors Gener compute the frequency of the motor noise based on the motor RPM and apply a separate notch for each motor on each axis. So if we have four motors and three axes, because we usually have, then in total we apply 12 notches and on each axis four notches, one notch for every motor. In case of the dynamic filter, because, for example, when we do not have the information about the RPM or, the, or any, any other reason, actually, we just take the FFT information and treat each separate axis as a source for every other axis. So, the peak frequency from the X is applied on X, Y and Z and so on. The difference. Um, is then uh, this a better or a worse filter than the RPM filter? Um, it's slightly worse. It's slightly worse because the delay on the, on the there is slightly more delay when picking up the up the uh, up the peaks. So the, the, okay, if you really like like to change the RPM of the filter, then may might be some delay. And but honestly, I, I said it one time. I when I was testing the original implementation of the uh, of the matrix filter and comparing this with the enabled RPM filter on one drone and just changing the configuration and flying again. I really was not able to feel the difference. Uh, yes, it there may be some very very minor differences in the in the gyro traces then analyzed with the black box lock, but still behind the stick it felt almost exactly the same. And uh, the I, I made a separate video when I showed you how the how the traces from the uh, matrix filter look like. Really, very very interesting results. Very very clean signal. So it's working. It's working. So if your build does not have the uh, modern ESCs or something else or something else, you just do not have the possibility to run the matrix uh, RPM filter. I'm sorry. Then yes, the matrix filter is definitely for you. The matrix filter will be enabled by default on the Emu Flight 030 and also will be enabled by default in the upcoming INAF 2.5. When exactly? Yeah, we have this whole coronavirus situation, so we have no really no idea when we're gonna release the INAF 2.5, but still it will be there and it really brings the performance of the INAF very, very, very close to the performance of the beta flight. I know what I'm saying. I tested all three, all three flight controllers recently and with the upcoming changes in the INAF 2.5 it will be really it will be amazing. Okay, so I hope that now everybody knows what the matrix filter is and also everybody knows what the RPM filter is and thank you for watching, thank you for your support and until the next one, bye bye!